That is the runner for James Fanshaw. Um, and we have seen everything else. So we'll catch number eight when he's going down the walkway, but he's a very interesting runner for the Inform Fanshaw team. 10 from 29 in the last fortnight. So the 100 to 30 favourite, Crocodile River, Ross Orion aboard for trainer Ed Dunlop as the runners are about to appear to make their way across to the starting point. As always here on the All Weather at Kempton as well as the Jockey Silks, we also have the International Saddle Towels to aid identification and the explanation of which coloured saddle towel belongs to which number in each race can be found on page 23 of this evening's full colour race card. First horse out onto the track, one of the two previous winners in the field, number four, deal maker, Billy Lochnane in the red with the white sleeves, the blue and white striped cap. Deal maker was a winner on debut at Southwell over five furlongs much earlier on in the year. She represents the Charlie Johnston yard. And being the four horse, deal maker will sport the yellow saddle towel. The others making their way across the start now. The second one to go to the start is number 10, that is Kate B. Quick. John Egan in white with the red star. The 10 horse always has the purple saddle cloth. Next one to go into the back straight is horse number nine. That is Poke the Bear. Freddie Larson in the turqu turquoise and dark blue hoops. The nine horse has the turquoise saddle towel. Then the yellow colors with the black sash and the black cap of Mr. Knockout, number three. Charlie Bishop aboard Mr. Knockout. Three horse always has the royal blue saddle cloth. Next duo just setting off towards the start. The first of them 
in the hoops of green and red is Clipsham Noble, number 11, with Kieran O'Neill. The 11 horses, Saltel is grey. And then the red colours with the white triangle of Penelope Valentine, number 5, with Luke Morris. Five horse has the green saddle cloth. Next one on the side of the track is horse number 13. That is Innocent Settler with Anna Gibson. White colours with the black seams and the stars on the sleeves. 13 horse has the brown saddle towel. Next one to go into the back straight is number 7. That is Cassandra Alexandra, a winner at Brighton just seven days ago. Kaya Fraser in the black and white Diablo silks. Seven horse has the orange saddle cloth. Then the favourite, who's on the big screen at the moment, that's Crocodile River, number one, Ross Orion in the light blue. One horse always has the red saddle towel. And that one is being followed to the start by number two, the only grey in the field, token gesture with Tyler Hurd, dark blue with the white hoop sleeves and the white cap. Two horse always has the white saddle cloth. And one of the last ones to go across towards the start, and the rider at the moment with feet out of the irons, and that is Marco Gianni, board number six, dark sorceress. Her colours maroon with the pink star. Six horse has the black sole towel with the yellow number. And then just about to make his way into the back straight is Me Tarzan, number eight, with Ross Coakley in the green with the white star and the white armlets. And the eight horse has the pink saddle towel. So that's a field of 12. The Unibet 0% Mission Nursery Handicap going here without number 12. 12 of them to face the starter. And now we have joint favourites at 4-1 to one in Crocodile River and Me Tarzan. 5-1, to one, Cassandra Alexandra. 7-1 to one in from 8, Mr Knockout. Also at 7-1, to one, Penelope Valentine. And it's 17-2, to two, bar those. Post time for our first race is at 4.55. We are now three minutes from post time. We're glad you're here. Runners have made their way down to the start for our opener here at Kempton. 12 go, number runner number 12, Ballard Bertie. It's a tight-knit race where quite a few of these are making the handicap debut, but one that ran in a nursery already, Crocodile River. She heads to market, a daughter of Oasis Dream for Ed Dunlop and Ross O'Brien, and she ran a nice race on her run at Newbury. Dropped a pound for that fourth and what was a stronger race than this, and not a bad draw in stall five, something you can't say about too much of the opposition. Um, one of the main rivals on form, potentially token gesture on handicap day, but 72 is unfortunately installed 12 for Mark Usher and Tyler Hurd. We've got six making a handicap debut, and of those, Paddock Pick was definitely number three, Mr. Knockout, son of Rumble in the Jungle. Still, Southern is okay for him. He's been gelded since we last saw him, and he's been off for two months, so he may well improve. And the other one that's been well back is Me Tarzan, 4 to 1, son of Bungle in the jungle, who made 55,000 euro at the Breeze Ups. He's making his handicap debut for the very much in form James Foundry Yard, 10 from 29 in the last fortnight. That in yellow and black is the one I like in the paddock, Mr. Knockout, currently 11 to 2. Big individual, but a scope to improve um, out of Rumble in the jungle. And Eve Johnson Houghton does exceptionally well with a two-year-old, so we can see if he improves on this handicap debut. Of the others, Dark Sorceress is quite a big price at 28 to 1 because she was second in a decent enough nursery behind Where's Claire at Nottingham. And if she can bounce back from this morning effort last time, she could go OK. Claire Hobson and Marco Ghiani teaming up. The one that's the most exposed but consistent in low-grade nurseries is Cassandra Alexandra. She won a week ago at Brighton, but she is effectively £7 higher on this occasion. And Kaya Fraser was the man in the saddle last time out. So his £5 claim is nullified as such, as he did uh, use that to good effect at Brighton. This would be a stronger contest. Betting as follows. It is top weight, Crocodile River, your favourite for Ross Ryan at Dunlop at 4-1. to one. Joint favourites now with me, Tarzan. Cassandra Alexandra, 9-2. Paddock pick, Mr. Knockout, 5-1. to one. Penelope Valentine, one of three for trainer Alice Haynes. He, she runs in the Rose Gallery colours, 15-2. to two. Nines, token gesture, still 12, puts you off him. Clipsha Noble, 10-1, the son of Memas. 18s, Poke the Bear, 25s, Dealmaker, who has won. That was back in April. 28s, Dark Sorceress. 80s, Innocent Settler. And Kate Be Quick, you're 100-1 outsider. There is the daughter of Blue Point, 
for the Rose Gallery. You've had three winners this turf season. She uh, made £32,000 as a yearling, bought from the Tap Somerville sale, and you'd imagine she will improve going into low-grade nurseries, and she's got a lovely draw in stall one. Luke Morris rides, interesting, keeping a nil, maybe because the 8-8, eight eight, but he's on Clipson Noble, uh, the son of Memma, so unfortunately he's in stall 13. Put some right on the outside over the seven furlongs here at Kempton. They are loading pretty promptly. Not too many more left to go forward. Four, including the paddock pick, Mr. Knockout. Very tricky, tricky opener. Point separates top four in the market. He has been gelded, this son of Rumble in the jungle, Mr. Knockout. And you can just see a little bit of temperament as he heads forward into the stalls. Understable jockey, Charlie Bishop. And perhaps you can see why Eve decided to geld him on the back of his most recent start, the owner's Norman Court stud. He does look like he's got a bit of scope to improve on what we've seen in the maiden novice sphere so far. And the other three, Poke the Bear, Token Gesture, both handicapped debutants. Saint Token Gesture has shown a bit of ability for Mark Usher, but it's got a bad draw in 12. And he too is showing a bit of attitude, the gelding. Normally there is a reason why they're competing at 0-60 level. And he's having a blindfold to be put into the stalls. Blindfold goes on to token gesture. You can see how Tyler Heard tries to avoid that bad draw. Compensate for it. Last one, let's go and join Mark Johnson. And they're off. They race over seven furlongs, quite a level break. In the center, Mr. Knockout is ridden to go forward, and that one is followed forward by Dark Sorceress. A little bit wider to those is Kate Be Quick, and widest of all is Token Gesture as they race towards the end of the back straight. Clipsham Noble is the one who's dropped out the back of the field. His last me, Tarzan, is last but one as they go towards the turn. It's Token Gesture from the wide draw, but has managed to get the lead as they go around the turn with Mr. Knockout to the rail racing in second. Kate Be Quick on that one's outside is in third. Dark Sorceress in fourth with a half mile to go. Penelope Valentine is racing in fifth position to the inside rail. Dealmaker is forced out wide going around the outside of Innocent Settler and Innocent Settler got hampered there and was taken back off heels. Cassandra Alexandra tries to make a bit of a move now from midfield. On that one's inside is Crocodile River. That is followed by Poke the Bear. Me Tarzan down the wide outside racing together with Clipsch Noble and drop right out the back now. Innocent Settler having been hampered on the home turn. They've got a furlong and a half to go. Tyler Hurd and Token Gesture have now gone clear. That break over the field is about two and a half lengths to Penelope Valentine and towards the near side, Mr. Knockout. Back in fourth position is Dark Sorceress, but inside the final half furlong. And it is Token Gesture who has the lead racing up towards the line. It is Token Gesture who wins. Getting up for second, Penelope Valentine. In third came Mr. Knockout. And there's four of the five of them all involved for fourth place. Handicap debutants to the four. They filled the first four places. But the winner was Token Gesture for owner-trainer Mark Usher. Jockey Tyler Hurd. And he's managed to defy stall 12 on this handicap debut. Impressive success in the grade. I think Mark Usher's going to have a fun winter with him. Second, Penelope Valentine for Alice Haynes and Luke Morris. Third, the paddock pick, Mr. Knockout. Um, he's shaped better on his handicap, Dave. And I think Nee Tarzan, who got in a bit of trouble at the back, has run on for fourth place. But token gesture, nine to one. Had shown ability in his three qualifying runs. Got a mark of 61. But stall 12 did put me off. But he got an absolute flyer from the gates. Tyler Hurd slotted him across in the lead. And when he said go at the two photo marker, he quickened nicely for a horse running in a class six handicap. And I think if they decide to keep him on the go in the winter... They're going to have a fair bit of fun with this gilded son of Kodiak. And interesting to see if he stays in the trainer's colours in due course. I think the Rose Gallery, who are looking for their fourth winner of the year on the grass, will be pleased with Penelope Valentine. While well, Mr Knockout hasn't run bad, he's been an impressive start to his handicap career, Jess. Yeah, continues on a really good uh, season um, for Mark Usher. And uh, this, uh, this horse has been given a confident ride. Uh, we'll take it from the start as that draw was the... Uh, the factor that was probably putting a few people off, still 12, and uh, you can see Tyler Hurd bounces out, 
get to the front. And there was Mr. Knockout was the horse that was going to try and take him on as well. But uh, I think that he's done very well from there, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. He's, whereas some from a wide draw dropped right out, the, including me, Tarzan. Uh, Tyler Hurd was keen to get Token Jester in a prominent position. And uh, as soon as he got into the lead, um, he just kept on bobbing along. I mean, he's got very interesting pedigree, this horse. He'd, he'd had three runs in novice races over six furlongs, but he's a nephew of Ebor winner, Muntahar. So he, there was always, the, even though he's by Kodiak, there was always a, the potential that he would go forward some effort on going up to seven furlongs and probably stay further because he's just got them in the... the you can see the horse in second there, Caitlin Quick, it's under all sorts of pressure, but one by one they come off the bridle and behind. And uh, as soon as Tyler Heard gets serious on token gesture, then it scoots away, and he's done this really well. He certainly has. I'm trying to look at anything picking up from the bat. There was a nice run from uh, Penelope Valentine at one point, but that's when actually Tyler Heard found another gear. It's still a little bit green, Rachel. So I'm fine. Yeah, and hangs almost. Isn't about the three or four path when we see the head on. Ends up on the near side. On the far side rail, sort of scrape and paint. Penelope Valentine sort of closed from third, fourth. But uh, me, Tarzan, out wide, Ross Coakley just sort of took him back from a, from a wide draw. And he made one decent run down the outside. You're going to see the green silks all the way on the right as we're looking at it. He, he's the only one in this race that actually has made up any semblance of, of ground. So mark him up like that because... Obviously, off the basis of one race, and the basis of the last six months of Kempton, you want to be very much more to the fore in the mm -hmm. races outside of the one week, which was September Stakes Week, and they got biblical amounts of rain. But we haven't lately. And um, But still, take nothing away. Token gesture. I love the way that, like I said, he, is, he needs to still learn a little bit. But his ears flicking back and forth, and he, given that he's a Kodiak, he'll just strengthen up. And I know this was an only an alt to 60, but there's plenty of these coming forward in the next couple of months, particularly early season three-year-olds. Those handicaps are normally quite light and ripe for the mm -hmm. taking. Yeah, and look, he was uh, rated to um, make it hard for him. You know, he's the second top rated in the race, so I uh, had to give weight away to plenty of them, but he still showed he could do that. The handicap will have a view on that, but uh, well done to owner trainer Mark Usher. Uh, Tyler Hurd, uh, taking off the, the saddle, and a, a welcome pat down the neck to Token Gesture, who returned at nine to one. Token Gesture makes a winning handicap debut here at Kempton for owner trainer Mark Asher. Tyler Hurd, you've managed to defy stall 12, which really put me off uh, on the handicap debut, but he showed loads of speed and it was actually very, very straightforward. Yeah, um, the draw wasn't ideal. I didn't really want to make it. We were going to sit midway, but I just couldn't get in. And he was doing it so easy. Um, I could let him go to the front there. He pricked his ears in front and didn't do anything. And he, he always felt down the straight like he was all over the place like a big baby. And that's why I was so hard on him. But he obviously had a bit more bit more class than the rest today and he's done it quite easily yeah but he showed promise in it in his free qualifying runs especially second start he'd run a nice race class six individuals but uh, when you watch it back you actually just put two lengths clear to your rivals and you asked him to go he did in the grade of a class six or show it a nice ton of foot yeah i always thought he'd be you know a lot better than 61 um he's just probably come on again from that he's so much to learn he was a uh, very babyish today even in that just off the bridle, so he's probably still got a fair bit of improvement in him, and I'd say he'll even, he'll even get a mile, I think, as well. He's going to be a fun horse for owner-trainer Mark Usher. Yourself, claim gone now, but winners that are flowing nicely. Mark Usher, lots of winners um, here at the track. I think it was one of them that you teamed up well with last winter. What's your plans going forward for uh, the winter ahead? Um, we stay around, similar. I've got some great supporters, like Mark, and, um, you know, I'll hang around for a bit, see how the winter goes. It's always usually quite slow for me, but um, it's working at the moment, and... Uh, I'm enjoying it again. Excellent stuff. Well done today. Yeah, thanks so much. That went well, James. You think the boss will sell it, wouldn't he?
I thought his form was actually decent enough. I thought in the draw he struggled. Yeah, I think that's it wasn't planned.